Hey y'all, and welcome to the final video in the character creation course. In this one, I'll show you how to fix Rigify's automatic weights via weight painting. So let's get started. If you're familiar with weight painting, you may think all you need to do is select the bone and adjust the weight for that bone. However, Rigify applies weights via vertex groups for all of the different objects, so we'll need to adjust the weights for each object for the individual vertex group. And to make that process easier, let's create a custom layout. Go to the top and right click the layout tab and select duplicate, and you should now have a layout 001 tab that we can mess around with. Then we need to join the properties and outliner panel together by right clicking on their separator bar, selecting join areas, and then making the arrow point upward and left click to confirm. That makes the properties panel fill up that side and will get the outliner to appear on the left. Now take your cursor to the top left of the 3D viewport, and when it turns into the crosshairs, click and drag to the right to split the viewport. Then change the editor type of the new window to be the outliner. This new layout will allow us to select our objects and the vertex groups a lot easier than if they were on the same side. Then we can remove the timeline since we don't need it here by splitting it like we did with the 3D viewport and joining both areas down like so. And now we can get into the actual weight painting for our character. To really make sure your weight painting is going to be perfect, I like to put my characters in a weird pose, or just a pose that moves all of their limbs so that I can see if anything isn't moving correctly. Now as you can see, the boots are pulling towards one another, and both swords aren't functioning as we want them to, bending in different places. So we'll need to fix the shoes and the swords, and some of the hair and other facial features that didn't go along with the rig when we crouched our character down. But, since the process is the same, I'm only going to show you how to fix the scabbard and the boots, since those are two different issues, and then I'll leave the rest to you. So hit Control tab and go back to Object Mode and select the scabbard object. Now because we have the Object Data Properties tab open, we can see all the vertex groups that might have an effect on the rigging of the scabbard. If your vertex group selection is smaller, go ahead and pull it down to fill up the whole section. That'll just make it much easier to find the groups so you won't have to scroll as much. Now by default, the vertex groups are sorted by bone hierarchy, but that can make finding a particular bone group difficult. So you can click the drop down arrow on the right of the vertex groups box and select sort by name to sort the groups alphabetically. Now we made a sword bone in the last video, and because we named it sword, you should be able to find the deaf sword group, or deformation sword group, which is the only bone that should control the scabbard. So with that sword group selected, hit control tab and go to weight paint mode on the scabbard. Immediately we can see a red to blue gradient for the weights, which means we've got a strong connection to the sword bone at the top, and it fades off as it goes towards the bottom. But because we made the sword bone to specifically control the scabbard and the sheathed sword, we want the entire scabbard to be strongly connected to the sword bone. To do that, hit N to bring up the viewport properties panel, and select the tool tab on the side there. Now adjust the weight of the tool to 1 and the strength to 1, and then hold left click and paint over all the vertices on the scabbard. Getting all the vertices can be a bit of a pain, but just rotate around the object and zoom in or out, and try to paint all the vertices that aren't falling into place easily. Don't worry, you'll get it eventually. Now that that's done, we can see that the scabbard still bends a little because of another vertex group, so we need to remove that group's influence on the object. To do that, we need to find the vertex group in the list that has any connection to the scabbard object, in my case it's the right shin bone, and we'll set the weight of our tool to zero and paint over the scabbard again. Once that's done, the scabbard should only be affected by the sword group, and that's basically the process that you'll have to go through for weight painting the rest of the objects. The second issue you may encounter occurs when you have an object that is created using the mirror modifier and is close together on the rig. If the objects are close together on the rig, you may find that they don't rig properly, like with the boots here, how one boot is affected by the movement of the other. To fix that, we'll clear the parenting on the boots by hitting Alt-P and choosing Clear Parent. Then apply the mirror modifier while in object mode, look at the object from the front view, and jump into edit mode. Then we'll turn on X-Ray and select all of one side of the mesh, either the entire left or right boot, it doesn't really matter which you choose, then hit P and separate by selection. Then go back to object mode and rename both objects in the outliner. Then select the rig and go into pose mode and clear any rotation and movement on your rig. You can do that by hitting Alt R and Alt G respectively, just make sure you have everything selected when you go to clear it. 
Then we need to select both boot objects and then the rig and hit Ctrl P and reapply the parenting with automatic weights. Now you just have to go back into each boot and repeat the process that you did for the scabbard earlier in the video. But if you end up in a situation where you can't change any of the weight for any of the faces or vertex groups on an object, you may need to go up and turn off face selection masking in the top left. Alright y'all, that's a wrap for the entire course. If you've made it this far and completed the course of all 22 videos, I hope you found it educational and enjoyed it at least a little. And if you did, consider liking the video and subscribing for future courses. Anyways y'all, I'm Sir Pinkbeard, thanks for watching, and I'll see ya in the next one.